Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be going over something that quite a few people have asked me to do and that is to show how I get crystal clear audio in OBS Live or OBS Studio. So OBS Live and OBS Studio are pretty much the same thing except OBS Live is a stream elements modification for live streaming. So as you can see here I have my activity feed here, this is for when I'm live streaming on YouTube. It gives me real-time notifications of new channel members, new subscriptions, new donations and things like that. So it's pretty much exactly the same as OBS except the fact that we've got a couple of extra windows. But I've also got my live chat here. So when I'm streaming I can view pretty much everything that's going on including whatever my viewers can view as well. So I see what my viewers see here and then I see my live chat, I see my notifications. And then I've got my scenes, my sources, my audio mixer, and my controls. Now, the microphone that I'm going to be using for this video is a Rode Wireless Go. The microphone that I'm using has pretty much nothing to do with the settings that we're going to be changing for the audio in order to make it a little bit better. So, basically, the microphone, it has something to do with it, but it doesn't have everything to do with it. So, if you've got a cheaper microphone, don't panic, this setting will apply to you as well. It's just that if you've got a more expensive microphone, you're going to get better quality audio anyway, naturally. However, that said, if you do have a cheap microphone, you may need to adjust it a little bit more, but the general consensus is the same. So, if we take a look on the bottom here, we've got the four different options, and the one that we're going to be focusing on is the audio mixer. So, if we see the audio mixer here, we can see that I've only got one audio source, and that is the microphone. So like I said, I'm using a Rode Wireless Go for this video, and that's the microphone that I've got plugged into my computer. As you can see here, we've got the audio levels going up and down, and as you can see, I've pretty much got it set to maximum, and it doesn't clip or anything like that, which is absolutely great. But if we click on the settings icon, or the settings cog, we can see that we've got several options here now. The one that we want to be focusing on is the filters, and we're going to click on that now. And as you can see, I've got a noise suppression filter here. If I remove this filter, you're going to notice a drastic change in audio quality. So I will warn you, do turn your speakers down now. If you're wearing a headset, you might want to move it away. So I'm going to remove this now. So I'm going to click on the remove icon. Click on yes. Three, two, one. And as you can see, there is a massive change in the quality of the audio. And that's just from one single filter. And that filter is called a noise suppression. So what the noise suppression does is it will suppress background noise and it will just focus on your voice or on the microphone for that particular input. So if we click on add and then click on noise suppression, click OK. And as you can see, it's drastically changed again. So we've got the noise suppression activated now. Background noise completely gone. I have a fan running just above me. That's the fan to my LED lights. And that's pretty noisy on its own without the hiss that you get on the microphone because of static interference. So as you can see here, we've got a suppression level and this is going to determine how much background noise you remove. So if I set this to zero dB, you can see that we've got no suppression. If I set this to 5 dB, negative 5 dB, we've got a little bit of suppression, but we've still got some background noise. If I set this to negative 10 dB, we've got a little bit less background noise. The general consensus is that negative 25 decibels will be enough for pretty much any environment or any natural recording environment. I'm in my workshop right now, so for a living, I repair consoles, and I also record those and live stream those on YouTube. But basically, the general consensus is that negative 25 decibels will be enough for pretty much any environment. Now, I have wooden panels all around me. This is a garden shed. It's my workshop, and it's not exactly the ideal recording environment as it is. So if I start increasing here, you're going to start to notice a little bit of a change. And then when I get to negative 25, you're going to notice a lot less change. So I'm going to keep on talking here and I'm going to basically just start waffling on a little bit. 
I haven't got a clue what I'm saying but obviously you can you can hear now that the audio isn't really changing anymore because we've removed pretty much all of the background noise and if we go back to negative 25 dB so we're going to go back to negative 25 in 3, 2, 1 there you go and as you can see the audio levels should have stayed pretty much the same uh, so negative 25 dB is going to be pretty much more than enough for any environment if you have acoustic panels you'll probably need less if you don't have acoustic panels you'll probably need a little bit more but all I can say is what you need to do is you need to record a couple of mic checks so you know the, the standard mic check 1212 uh, with a 0 dB filter, 5 dB filter, 10, 15, 20 and so on until you find that sweet spot. Uh, try the audio in different different scenarios such as using PC speakers, using um, 5.1 surround speakers, using headset and things like that. Uh, just try and get that sweet spot between each different viewer that you're going to be having on your channel so some people might be using a headset some people might be using laptop speakers some people might be playing it on a phone just try and play it on as many devices as you can and try and get that sweet spot but that's going to be it for this video if you have any comments or questions do leave them down in the comment section down below i will do my best to answer them and if you want to see more tutorials let me know by giving me a thumbs up and as always remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so that you never miss an upload that's going to be it for now. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, see you later. Bye for now.